My name is Brenda Abbott. I am 54. I train at Fort Worth Strength and Conditioning. When the gym opened, that made a huge difference in having uh, the one-on-one -on -one with a coach, being here with a coach, getting the specific uh, direction on your lifts is invaluable. And so I kind of preach that a lot because starting where he wasn't there every time and I wasn't in a gym setting where I was getting the one-on-one -on -one coaching, now that I am, it's invaluable. So I've watched my, everything in my NLP has gone up so much. I mean, it's just been crazy how my form's better, my lifts are better, the weight's better, and I've exceeded everything that I thought that I could already do in, in the weight-wise for me at my age. Um, before I started with uh, the lifting, uh, starting strength, I was CrossFit, so I did six years of CrossFit. Prior to that, really it was just going to the, the gym, a 24-hour fitness or any of those and working out. Um, but I've always been active all my life, physically active, but never much a runner. And that was uh, one of the reasons that I came to Darren because I have a misalignment in my left knee. So even in CrossFit, I never ran. So I was modified the workouts. And I used to uh, wear a brace that would help kind of push the patella back in a neutral position for squatting and step-ups, anything I did in CrossFit. So when we started the starting strength method, I was using the knee brace, and then kind of on my own, I said, you know, I'm squatting differently. It feels better. I'm not going to use the brace. And Oh, bummer. I haven't used it since. <laughs> but my legs are stronger, so those muscles now are built up around the knee to help support the knee, and it's just yeah. been, it's been crazy. And I, crazy. I think one of the keys to that... Um, and for a lot of a lot of lifters, a lot of trainees, or a lot of my patients, I think one of the keys to patellofemoral anterior knee type pain is that you know we drove the deadlift through the roof. I mean, we drove your deadlift strength, um, getting your hamstrings stronger, getting your posterior chain stronger, and um, uh, you that's that's been a big plus for you. Huge. I think. So yeah, just how I feel overall is amazing. You know, coming from that CrossFit background. You're sore all the time, you're fatigued a lot, you're winded a lot, you're just hitting it so hard in such a short amount of time. And lifting is very physical, don't get me wrong, but it's rewarding and you get sore a little bit, but it's not like you go days on end sore. And so I've never felt better, I'm stronger. I always preach that you know the key is sustainability and training. The thing I think that we find as older clients, and you already said your age, yes. um, but you know, 50 plus clients, 40 plus clients, that um, this is sustainable. This is something that you can do, and as you get stronger and stronger, and you get closer to your maximum genetic potential, we have to change things. Right. Um, and the gains become smaller, as you've seen. The gains yes. get smaller and smaller and smaller. But the beautiful thing is, it's something you can do week in, week out. And, um, and your body adapts to it. It adapts you're, to it. You're not trashed all the time. No, no. And so you know, so that's a big difference, I think, for you. And I thought when I started, too, that it would be, okay, coming from that background, I can still, in my off days, <clears throat> I can still do some other things, you know, come in and do some kettlebell swings, do some rowing, things like that. And... That works at first. <laughs> it works at first, but I have to admit, for me, and not everybody's like this, but for me... Probably because I am older too, but I just because I'm not a runner, um, I just don't find myself exercising on my off days that I'm lifting, and that's surprising to me too because I'm getting stronger and I'm not doing anything else to supplement that really. Now I could, and maybe that would help, you know, in some no, areas, but. but that's okay. <laughs> it's no. just like we, I, we met we, in CrossFit. We actually did meet in CrossFit. Yeah, we met in um, CrossFit. 40 for our 40, our masters. Right, 40, for 40 fit. Yeah, kind of had 40 right. we fit. We met in that. And so... Oh, you did a seminar with me. You did, did a 40 a seminar. fit seminar. That's right. Right. And so... We yeah. met there, and then we did a couple other little get-togethers mm -hmm. with CrossFit meets, mm -hmm. and then went to him for some knee stuff, and then... Uh, about Shoulder surgery. Two year and a half years ago, had right rotator cuff surgery, and so went to him for all the therapy, and yeah. doing great now. Well, I had never had any type of major surgery prior to having rotator cuff surgery. So um, for me, I think it was degenerative or just kind of happened over years because I had noticed things over the years. So I modified my CrossFit and decided to um, 
you know, had the surgery done. So it was four or five months later. I thought I'll do it in the winter time. Um, and so I did that and had talked to Darren about it, went to um, my rehab for the shoulder after that. So in that process, it was great because I learned a little bit more about the strength cycle and building strength, even though I was still in the CrossFit world and still wanted to be when I recovered. Um, it was always in the back of my mind because I knew that Darren was teaching it, coaching it, doing it. You know, every a couple of people that I worked with at the CrossFit gym, um, you know, were being coached by him as well. So, as the re, yeah, as the rehab came more and more, the months and months went by, and I was getting, you know, better. Um, it really surprised me getting into the strength side of it, how much stronger, faster I got. And I knew after that, going back into the CrossFit world, you know, some of those things you're just not going to do again. For me at my age, it wasn't worth it. So it was time to revamp my thinking on training. I see this in my practice, and I see this in the gym, and I saw it when I was in CrossFit. We, we only know what we know. Mm -hmm. And we have this sense of confirmation bias because we learn things that we think are truth, but they're really not. Right. And then when we're exposed to truth, we go, oh, look, there's the <laughs> results. And then it's just in black and white. Mm -hmm. And so that, that teaching model, when, whenever we have trainees or clients that come and do starting strength, and you've seen them in the gym, <laughs> they immediately just, a light comes on in their head, and they're like, wow, this makes sense. It mechanically just makes sense. Um, if it didn't make sense, we would look for the next <laughs> solution. Right. Because then we would say, well, this isn't the truth that we thought it was. But the, the deal is it makes it sense. It makes sense. Right. And it makes sense to the, mm -hmm. to the client. You feel it. You, you, feel you it. sense it. And you yeah. think after all those years of doing CrossFit or whatever that you should be stronger than that. And you're not. And so you're like, it's an eye-opener. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I've kind of surpassed what I already thought I could do. So I told her most of that is right in here. <laughs> it is. There's, there's much more waiting for her. It is. If, if this grows, everything else is just going to follow. So to expand... That is going to be fun to watch because I don't know where it's going to go from here, and I'm completely open. I'm I mean, completely you, open to you, what I can do because, and then you start to get into watching other lifters, other starting strength lifters, and you know women that are in their 70s, and even a woman that was in her 80s, and they're so inspiring to me. So I'm thinking, gosh, I can do this for a long time. Yeah. So the sky's the limit, kind of thing. But the other good thing about the coaching that you really helped me with is when you have a little setback, drive through it. And so we, ex we experienced that with my back <clears throat> one day. And um, I mean, what did it like? I just deadlifted, I think, the bar. No, you were, you were squatting. You, you were squatting, right? I was squatting. Yeah, you were squatting and she tweaked her upper back. And um, she said, hey, I think I'm going to be done for the day. I, I need that's to, right, I, that's right. I, I yeah. drink my back and everything. I was like, no, 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 let me see some reps. And she did did a couple of reps. She's like, it kind of hurts up there. I said, well, let's lower the weight just a little Stay bit. Low. So we lowered the weight a little bit. I said, now, can you give me five sets of three with that? And she's like, yeah, I think I can. And So she did her <laughs> squats. And then she said, I, I don't think I'm going to press today. We're going to hold on to press. And I said, well, let, let's, let's just try the bar. So we did the bar and we added some weight. I said, can you do five sets of three with that? And she said, yeah, I think I can. So we did that, and then we went to deadlift. I think we did the regular weight on the deadlift because by that time the pain was I gone. was I was feeling so much better. Yeah. But the first first and second squat set was not. It wasn't a sharp pain, but it was yeah. there. Yeah. So we were like, okay, if you're not having a sharp pain, then we're okay. And we worked through that. By the time I was like on the fourth and fifth, I mean, I was starting to feel better. I was like, I, yeah. I think I'm feeling better. So then we go to the press. We're like, yeah, let's try that. And then we get to the deadlift, and it felt good. And the next day, I was sore, and the day after that, I'm back on track. I mean, yeah. I think I PR'd again. You PR'd that week. I PR'd yeah. that week. So it yeah. was. And I it was think just that's crazy how keeping everything lubed, if you will. Yeah. You know, warm. motion's lotion. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> so I mean, just keeping it working yeah. and keeping the body moving. Don't stop, and that's what I learned. Yeah, I think it's a difference in philosophy. I, I, what I love about being in the starting strength community with, with our lifters, our trainees, and with other coaches is, is that it, there's a strong desire to want to learn, to apply science to what we do, to apply experiential evidence, what we see, what we actually see work within our training population, and, um, 
And I think that that's what drives that's what drives your effort. That's what drives how you coach. It drives how we respond to you as a, as a lifter here and as a member here is what we know to be true. And sometimes we have to step out on the water and do something that's uncomfortable for you. But if that's been our experience, then we have to go with what we know works. And, right. and it works. Right. Well, most and of the time I would have never thought. So I would yeah. have probably stopped. Yeah. I would have gotten seized sore. up. Yeah. yeah. Gotten sore. And so that was a big lesson, you know, to me and just keep moving. Yeah. I really think there's, a, there's an artesian level of mastering coaching people to get stronger. Mm -hmm. And I don't think you see that in a lot of the fitness world today. And I think that that's what, that what, that's what we bring a lot of value to the population is being able to look at barbell training is not just lifting a bar up and down. It's, it's, a, it's a skill. Right. It's a skill. It's a craft. It's, and, if, and if someone is really, really good at it, it, it reaches that artesian level. And right. I think that's what most of the coaches I know want to reach is to be able to look at a lifter, look at a trainee and go, I know how to fix that or I know how to cue that or I can teach anyone how to lift the barbell. Mm -hmm. And, and um, that you've kind of experienced that. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've been able to go through that together and experience that. Because even in your, your traditional gyms, I've had a personal trainer, a couple of them. And so you, you do feel like you're getting that one-on-one, yeah. -on -one, but it's, it's, it's just not the same. Like, yeah. you don't feel that they, they know the movements and how they apply to each and every person to to look at you and say, yeah, you've got a knee issue, so we're gonna we're gonna work it this way. Where when I came to starting strength, it was tailor made for me, for what what my body type was, what conditions you know that I had that might prohibit me from doing this or that, and then you just work into that and you got. Well, we specialize in snowflakes, <laughs> so you know. <laughs> people, I think people that ex uh, Rip said it. I don't know how many times he said this. He said it in the book. He said it in your seminars. He said it in personal settings. You know, people that do the program, it works. It just works. We have. I haven't met a single person who will stick to the program, follow programming, and and not try to complicate things. The beautiful thing about Brenda is she believed me that it would work for her. So even when her knee was hurting and we first started squatting. She believed me. When her shoulder hurting, she we first started pressing, she believed in me. And over time, that belief became self-belief that she could rely on her own. Now, for lack of a better terms, she's kind of like a little apostle. She can go out and, you know, and she can and she can speak from experience that this works. Right. My body feels better, I feel stronger. She said the other day she brushed up against something and her booty hit it and she's like, Wow, I got a butt now. You know? <laughs> like, so, rock hard. Yeah. And so, <laughs> I think I think that, you know, when you experience the kind of training that we do and you and it's so it's so amazing how, you know, four or five barbell movements and a couple body weight movements can, can really change your life. Mm -hmm. um, because you do it. Day in, you know, you do it three days a week or whatever the program is, right. but you just stick to that linear progression, and it makes it makes sense. It, it works. It's been exciting to see the the changes in my body, so I'm very happy with it. I'm not, you know, going ooh, you know, that's yeah. it's looking too, it's looking a little rough there, you know. <laughs> yeah, that doesn't, it's not happening. It's it's the strength and it's the benefit of the strength in everyday life. From walking up the stairs at my office in heels every day and walking down the stairs. I never could do that with my knee, especially without holding onto the rail and being a little gimpy. And I don't have to do any of that now. You know, I go up and down and I'm not winded. And so it, it just, I see it carry over in so many things of, of the rest of my life, which is fantastic, especially as you get older. Which we are. Yes, which we yes. are. All right.